And welcome everybody to episode 33 of Comic Confidential, the weekly podcast where we bring you the week's comic-related news, views, and reviews. I'm your host, Troy. With me, as always, my beautiful friend, Cade. Hello. And my other beautiful friend, Amy. Hello. I was going to get really sad if you called him beautiful, but not me. No, you're both beautiful to oh, me. You're making me blush. You guys, look at, look at you, you beautiful faces. Uh, how's everyone been? Uh, I've been good. Yeah. I'm like super excited because it was Batman Day oh, yesterday. Yes, <laughs> it was. favorite day of the year. Everyone's yeah. favorite day of the year. Yeah, oh. September the 17th. Pulled is... out my Batman jammies. Did you? Yeah. Why aren't you wearing them all the time? Yeah, can I? Yeah, you can. It doesn't have to be Batman Day <laughs> to celebrate Batman. Well, it just works better. My girlfriend says I can only wear it on Batman Day. <laughs> <laughs> Is she lying to me? No. Okay. Yeah. Well, listen to her then, maybe. Uh, yeah, I uh, I didn't actually wear anything in particular, um, but I did celebrate. Hmm. We did. We did. Okay. Um, what did everyone? What's a, what's everyone's like? What's the word I'm looking for? What's everyone's best bat memories? I guess. Oh. <sighs> So what's like many. your favorite? What's your favorite bat thing? Whether it's movies, comics, TV shows, anything. His car, probably. Yeah, His that car. classic that car. Cla- yeah, the classic car. The yeah, classic car. from the TV series. From the TV mm. series, yeah. Adam West's. <laughs> Adam West's car. <laughs> really, of all the things, all Batman. the things. How can you deny it? Yeah, well, I suppose it yeah. is pretty the cool. Oh, gee. Yeah. What about you? Oh, for me, I don't know. There's so much. Where do you even like start? You don't even know. No, <laughs> no. Well, I mean, like it, honestly, like when you think about it, there's so many like classic, classic comic books that have come out, mm. um, you know, around the character. There's, you know, some of the movies have been absolutely brilliant when you look at things like The Dark Knight. The Batman animated series from the 90s was awesome, awesome mm. as shit. Um, but yeah, so like, where do you even start? It's a day you could celebrate all week long. Oh yeah, Batman year. Let's get that. The year yeah. of the bat. Oh. oh, is that even a thing? I don't think so. Yeah, it no. should be. We'll make it the thing. Yeah. Well, they're changing the horoscopes now. Did you see? Are they no. really? Yeah. Apparently, they're changing the bracket for when. So I'm now not an Aries. I would be a Pisces. Oh, what? So I feel like we should petition. <laughs> Who's doing that? that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's fully confirmed yet because I've seen different. Um, Shifting of the dates, but anyway, oh, we could get the bat year yeah. in. I don't think the Chinese would be on board. <laughs> I think they've because they've had theirs for like thousands and thousands yeah. of years. Yeah. I think they're pretty well set. Um, maybe we could combine it with Year of the Rat, oh. which kind of sounds like bat. Yeah, and you know, we'll just see if we can fool people. <laughs> um, just uh, say bat from now on, and then yeah. they'll think. Yeah, it's real. So the world celebrated Batman Day, um, which is fantastic. I don't, I don't actually think, and you correct me if I'm wrong, and you know, people on Twitter, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if there is a specific like Superman Day, mm. or like a um, like a Green Lantern Day, or Flash Day, or something like that. Is there? Every day is a Flash Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is a Professor X day in, in my a, books. In Amy's yeah. books. Um, but is there? Does anyone know? Yeah, no, I, I can I tell you. I'll so. have to check that well, out. Well, Batman Day is, is only three years old, you know. Yeah. When, so, what? Who started this? I would love to know that. It was something to do with the 75th anniversary of Batman or something. Oh. And yeah. they, they decided to make Batman Day and that was three years ago. So. Yeah. Cool. cool. And right. so they should. Yeah. A little fun fact for you. A little awesome. fun fact uh, that Melbourne... Mm-hmm. Where we are not from, but we're from the same country where Melbourne is. <laughs> uh, the founder of Melbourne's name was John Batman. Yes, and there is a park named Batman Park down there. Yeah, which so they're no, currently trying to change the name of it. I disagree with. But yeah, is why the would Joker you? doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. No, but it is a joke. It is yeah, a joke. Nice you are correct. Um, yeah. So why would you not want to keep it as Batman Park? I don't know. Get your surely, shit together. surely there's like a, a a Batman statue there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just of like, I don't think there is. People There's, have just made a makeshift yeah, one. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. There's probably a statue that has a lot of bat shit <laughs> on it. Yeah, but yeah. But other than that, probably. Well, I know not. there's a lot of bat shit where we're from. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. We could yeah. have Batman Day, just walk down the city streets. Yeah. Bats everywhere. Anyway, hmm, let's, let's get into some news. <laughs> shall Sounds we? good. All right. Uh, so, uh, what happened this week? Heaps happened this week. Mm-hmm. So, first one I guess we'll talk about is the fact that Brian Singer has essentially confirmed. That Mr. Sinister will be the big bad guy for Wolverine 3. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? Cool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well no. That, with the... Um, so deep. After, after <laughs> credit Thanks. scene of X-Men. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's kind of in the bag, isn't it? Well, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, you know, Mr., uh, like I, I guess Mr. Sinister is Nathaniel Essex. Um, he, is, he is a very, very, very powerful... 
uh, mutant, probably close to as powerful as the X Men would have ever faced. Mm-hmm. Um, on levels of kind of like apocalypse, yeah. apocalypse type levels. Is he Omega? I w- you would assume so. You would think being, so. Like being that sort of thing. The director is actually um, kind of turned around and not necessarily confirmed nor denied those rumors. Right. Um, but he's kind of just put a very generic tweet out on his account sort of saying, oh, who's Mr. Sinister? Sounds like a creep or something like that. You know? uh, I feel like yeah. if it wasn't, you would probably say, nah, you're wrong. Yeah, exactly. So it's probably right. I exactly. Think. You'd probably just like flat out just go, well, no, we're actually not. So could you yeah. please stop talking about it? Yeah. Um, I think it's cool. I think it does lead into, um, there's because he does a lot of work with like cloning and things like that. So it could lead into an X-23 situation. Oh, yeah. Which is going to be, you know, well, not going to be, but it could be the continuation of Wolverine once Hugh Jackman steps aside, which is obviously what he's going to do after this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it, it you know I, I think it's a fantastic villain if they do it right. I would like them to get the look right. Yeah, but yeah, well, they could really take some direction away from what they did with Age of Apocalypse. Well, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. But and I guess sometimes, like you know, with these things, if you go too comic book accurate, it can look really weird on screen yeah. because it's so like if you've seen like Mister Sinister or like you know, sort of what he wears on an, any given Sunday, I guess <laughs> is like uh, you know it's this fantastic sort of like outfit with yeah. a cape and like all this. You know, you probably won't have that. But a lot of the times, he also just rolls around in a suit. Mm. Uh, but he does have like blue skin and all this sort of stuff. So you know, it depends on how they do it but i think um uh, i think they'll do it justice i have better hopes for this movie than i did for wolverine 2 after the first wolverine yes Mm. because that was terrible that was terrible that first one was shit house i can't even remember it i've just blanked it out of my head to be honest yeah which is probably fair yeah that's a good call amy (laughs) (laughs) yeah uh we have got our first look at robbie ray's Mm -hmm. ghost rider ghost rider for agents of shield what's your thoughts on him um, it's it's a different look, but but the Marvel now version of Ghost Rider is a different kind of look yeah. anyway. Um, I don't know, man. Like it looked it looked great. Like I don't know if you guys saw the picture of the side by side comparison of like the um, the the comic and the promo image yes, that they yes. released, but it was very very comic accurate. Uh, we'll find out next week because mm. Agents of Shield does return. It does yeah. return. The um, thing that because um, I didn't see the comparison first, I just yeah. saw you know how they have like the um, the promo for the whole show coming up, and yeah. it's just like a Ghost Rider head, yeah, yeah, in the back, and I'm like, Jesus that's Christ, that's so that weird. Eh? Doesn't blend in at all. That looked very shit. Like, yeah, I would almost question whether that was an official <laughs> image that yeah, had been yeah, released. Maybe yeah. not. But I saw that first, and I was like, oh, they fucked this up. But <laughs> then, <laughs> having a look at that, and having having a look at the preview for the season. Mm. Um, and and the things that like when you see the car and the car like with the wheels on fire and all yeah. that sort of stuff yeah. like it actually looks pretty cool. It does. I don't know how it's going to fit in the grand scheme of what Agents of Shield is really about, mm. um, but we should be in for a really really good season. Um, but that does kick off next week. It does. One thing that I like it's it's a weird little fault I have with the the skull yeah. is that it it looks really clean, it's super clean, yeah, <laughs> way too clean. Like you think you might have a little bit of like charcoal or, or something like going something. on you think that guy doesn't have like some sort of like skull polish or something <laughs> yeah. like, like bowling like ball polish yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly like that yeah he's just out there That's it. and it makes the skull look dome. really fake like mm. like amy said on the the promo poster they released it looks ridiculous it's like there a, my you like, know it is fake though, right? before oh like it's not real no oh. it's real <laughs> <What>? <laughs> like it's not a real dude's skull <laughs> <laughs> i've but, said before my skills are paint level yeah like, i feel like, <laughs> like I could, mario paint yeah i could have made that Anyway, yeah, okay. That but, was my peeve with it. But. Well, look, and, and you know, we have we have been quick to, you know, um, I guess we've been quick to kind of come down on people for judging things too quickly before. Yeah. So we would never do that ourselves. <laughs> no. I think it's going to be great. Don't well, get I me think wrong. it's going to be bloody unreal. Yeah, but it just that's, it just mm. looks too clean, mate. <laughs> You're just, from hell. It's just good to have Ghost Rider back. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, but we'll see how that goes. So we got some early reviews for the Luke Cage, and it says that next Netflix has a smash hit on its hands. Mm. So pretty much, the, like there were a lot of, uh, I guess critics got early reviews, like sort mm-hmm. of up to a month before the show actually comes out, because it doesn't come out until the thirtieth, I think, of September. Yeah. Um, and yeah, all reviews so far are really sort of pointing towards this being. Probably like on par with Daredevil season one, if not better. Right. Uh, I know Kevin Smith gushed about it on 
As on, he does. On, on his podcast. Yeah, yeah, on his podcast. I think he cried. <laughs> he probably did. He probably cried. No, look, but he did. He, he absolutely loved it. They couldn't really go too much into detail about it because there was still a um, like a ban mm. um, on uh, reviewers actually sort of giving yes. any sort of detail or but anything But Netflix like that. has been doing so well, so it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, like, exactly. I, there's no surprise that no. this is going to be an awesome show. Yeah, and I think if this one, like, if this works well, then we've, we've had a really, like, we've had a really, really good run and it sort of bodes well for Iron Fist yep. and yep. the Defenders coming yep. soon because I think Iron Fist is the one that I'm worried about. That's the one, because it's weird, it's different. It's it's mystical, you know, there, there are a lot of those sorts of elements to it so we'll see we'll see how they handle that. Yep. Mm. Um, but Luke Cage looks set to be absolutely unreal and, you know, as, as you guys know, massive <laughs> Luke Cage fan. Yep. Uh, I can't wait for this thing, man. I just can't wait to hear the soundtrack for this this series. He's oh, yeah, man, that's going to be awesome. That's going well. straight onto my iTunes, like Apple <laughs> Music account. We'll see the, straight up. The thing is, like, I got this wrong because I thought it was coming out on the 28th. So I thought before I leave, I'd have a couple of days to watch it. Turns out I'm going to have to binge <laughs> all 13 episodes in one day, which I am absolutely willing to do. Marathon. In one day. In one day. You can do it. The day before I leave the country. Um, you are crazy, mate. <laughs> yeah, oh, look, you just watch me, mate. You don't know what I'm capable of. It'd be good if there was a way that you could get onto like Netflix and make it available offline. Oh, yeah. yes. That, like that, Apple Music. Like, uh, and yeah. Spotify does that yeah. too. So. Yeah, that would be cool. If you're listening, Netflix. Yeah, yeah. there's a hot Can tip you for that? you. Hot mm. tip, Netflix. Make that happen. Um, shall we move on? Yep. Yeah, let's move Cage. on. Yeah. Uh, there was some, some big big news kind of, I guess, in, in the sense that um, uh, Zack Snyder released – he's released a few images this week, hasn't he? And one of the first ones that he did release was the bat tack suit. Yes. Did I say that right? The bat The bat tack suit. bat tack suit. Yeah. yeah. The, the, in, um, in the bat shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the Batman tactical suit. So it was basically done. It was, um, it was Ben Affleck's last day of filming in that specific suit. So he released an image, you know, um, to, to kind of say, oh, hey, like it's all done. Um, what do you think? Because the internet has kind of gone... Oh, that's Owl Man. <laughs> oh, fucking what a, what a rip off of Owl Man. Um, I'm sick of that shit. Owl Man or Night Owl, Night Owl from The Watcher. Yeah. They are, mm. Confusion abounds because they are actually two different characters. So don't get confused. Mm. Night Owl is the character from Watchmen, which I think is the one that it's most commonly yeah. being yeah, compared yeah. to. Um, look, I get it, but like at the same time, it's really a, like it's – it's a non thing, isn't it? Because yeah. yeah. Like Much Night Owl was kind of based off of Batman anyway. Yeah. So you kind of then saying Batman looks like a character that was based off Batman, Batman. so Batman <laughs> looks like Batman. Yeah. It's it could <laughs> just go for days. It yeah, could it go. could. It's that inception going on there. Batception. But I, I like I know a lot of the thing like well, not a lot of the things, the the one thing that the people are sort of more pissed off about over anything is just the goggles. They just don't like the look of the goggles. Yeah, um, but he's probably doing some bloody welding or something like that. That's all safety. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta look out for his safety. Exactly. Yeah. Number exactly. one. There would be some strict safety, like workplace health and safety oh, yeah. guidelines within the Justice League. Could you I'll imagine assume. the Batman just getting a ticket written up because all oh, your goggles aren't on, mate? Yeah, he gets like some sort of corrective action. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, you get a random inspection. You, you, you never You've got to be on point. Exactly. Uh, you had a really good theory <laughs> though, um, which I'm pretty sure you created. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and I called this like... You did call Ages it. ago. Yeah. The, the, and I don't know if you, you've seen this, Amy, mm. my theory, but you've what it is... Many. <laughs> I've got so many. Uh, but what it is, uh, Deathstroke, the image that oh, I guess a video that Ben Affleck released. Mm -hmm. I said he was in the bat plane. Yeah. Oh yeah, you did. I remember. I'm yeah. on board. The bat ship. As the bat you ship. It. I'm yes. on board. <laughs> I just made a, a pun without no, 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 no. <laughs> and All aboard. <laughs> All aboard. <laughs> and I believe Batman is in his bat plane here. Yeah, so you so basically you, to to break it down and make it simple, it make it simple. you believe both um, in, so the tax suit and Deathstroke reveal are both in the same place, yes. which is the bat plane. You have a look at those columns; mm -hmm. they're the yeah. same. Very good. Uh, and there is con conspiracy theory going on here. Well, see, we know for a fact that Deathstroke will appear in um, the Batman standalone film, yeah. and that's fine. But they've never they've never confirmed nor denied whether he will make an appearance in the Justice League. That's yeah. right. Because obviously that is where all this other Batman imagery is coming from. So could that be a little tease of him, you know, in uh, the Justice League movie? I say yes. Hmm. Yes, me too. It would make sense. That would be cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. It would be really cool. And even if it's like a um, after credit scene. Yeah. yeah. I Which think it probably will be. It they could like be. to draw you in with that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But would you would you really show your after credit scene off like that? Mm. Uh, 
don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, are we really going to question uh, like the the studios that have released, say, Suicide Squad, where they showed us ninety percent of the movie and before the Batman vs Superman yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's you know, and it's still I, under the control of Zack Snyder. So you can't really like. You would expect it. Yeah, I 100% now believe you've convinced me. (laughs) This is the after scenes trailer. Uh, Not trailer, trailer, yeah. Yeah. We have got some little bit of a clickbaity news. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Alan Richardson confirmed. Confirmed in Bunny Ears. That he's uh, playing Shazam. Yeah, so clickbaity in the sense that somebody tweeted him. Just a random person. (laughs) Some random. Some random tweeted him and said, oh, hey, man, are you playing Shazam? (laughs) And his response to the tweet was, yep. (laughs) So, <laughs> so it, now I hope he does. Yeah, well, that would be amazing. It, it's like the world's most blase reveal yeah. of anything. <laughs> it's like something that we've been waiting for for years with this Shazam like news like, yeah, because we've known The Rock has been Black Adam for for three or four years, yeah. like, however long it's been. Like mm. I don't even know now. Um, but yeah, this guy's just like, oh yeah, they, that's yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but what do you think? Like if that is actually the case, like what do you guys think? I of think Alan he, Rich and as Shazam. Yeah, I think yeah. he looks the part. Mm, I yeah. agree. I think he probably even like more acts the part. Yeah. So, which is good because, you know, kind of when you look at Shazam or Captain Marvel or however, like, you know, people have still very much, this is Captain Marvel, don't take this away from me. Um, but, you know, with Shazam, it's kind of like a, a kid in a grown up's body, mm. effectively. Yes. So, you know, and he could really pull that off, I think. And if you've seen any of the stuff pretty much that he's been in, that's kind of what he does. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. But he's definitely got the definitely got the physical characteristics to pull it off for sure. Mm-hmm. So I think like clickbait or not like i i think it's um i think it would be awesome if he actually did bloody great choice yeah, yeah okay. absolutely do you think some casting managers are just maybe kicking themselves if they haven't picked him yeah like, like they've if actually, they haven't they should now yeah like, yeah it's like whatever dude they've actually got lined up already is <laughs> just like oh yeah sorry. actually sorry this is really awkward <laughs> sorry john ham <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry john ham uh we've got this younger much better suited guy that we want for this role mm-hmm. um Thank you for coming. Yes. Mm. Hey, uh, you know how you're talking about some pictures were released I did earlier say this week. That, yeah. Yes. Uh, we we got our first look at Commissioner Gordon. Mm. Yes, for Batman Day. For Batman. It was on Batman Day. It yes. was. Oh. That's that's why he released it, kind of as a celebration of Batman sense. Day. Yep. And yeah. he's next to the biggest motherfucking bat light Spotlight. I've ever seen. Yep. Well, it can't be a fucking torch, can it? Well, like, <laughs> you know, well, with some te- cellophane over the top like you used to do as a kid. <laughs> Maybe it can these days. You know, there's LED lights. They're getting pretty strong. Yeah. I suppose. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, it, you know, it is, it's it's him right next to a massive spotlight. I guess the problem is, like, it's done in very dark black and white. And you can't really see it's very sort of Frank him. Miller. It is. Um, it's very um, noir Noir. noir. Yeah, film noir. Is that yeah, a thing? I that, think that's that a, thing. a thing. Um, but I guess my point is that you can't really see him so much. You can sort of, like, sort of see him with the classic hat and yeah. like, all that sort of stuff. It looks cool, but you can't really see the mustache, which mm. I think is what we're all looking forward to. I was like more so trying to see his pipes to see if he's like just super jacked. Yeah, well, he was, <laughs> you know, he was wearing a big trench coat. You don't wear a trench coat that big if you're not packing some serious gunnage. Yeah, yeah. it's the only thing that fits his arms. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how jacked he is Mm. uh, next year when Justice League gets released. So excited. And that's going to take us to the Weekly Wrap, the segment where we wrap up all the week's TV action, or at least at the moment, just this one show, Fear the Walking Dead. Until next week. Until next week. Oh, my God, that's so exciting. we have so much fucking TV next week. We're going to have three shows. (laughs) Three shows. Oh, man, we're almost back to regular broadcasting. So close. So very close, my friend. So close. But anyway, let's talk about Fear the Walking Dead, Mm. Pablo and Jessica. Madison attempts to form an alliance. Nick puts his attic skills to good use. And Alicia becomes the most resourceful of them all. Doesn't she what? Apparently. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, so we're going to do this as we have been doing this because this is the way the show wants to run. The show wants to run its different storylines. So we're going to break down each individual storyline rather than try to mix it all as a whole. Because I do want to point out for this particular show itself, it was very choppy between the two stories. I don't know if you picked up on that. Yeah, I wondered if they had like a guest editor. Oh, man, I I think someone, it was like, bring your kid to work day (laughs) and they let them have at it. Yeah. Because it was very, very back and forth. Um, And you can get away with that sometimes, but 
with this one in particular, it like it really fucked with the tension and the drama. Yeah. Like it's it sort of, you know, it's kind of building to something and then it's like, oh, flip back to this yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you come back and it's kind of like, well, okay, so. Oh, you know. okay, so they're over there now. Yeah. Oh, they're doing that now. Oh. Exactly. But that's not even my biggest gripe of this show for this week because um, uh, what did I fucking say would happen? <laughs> Didn't I fucking say this would happen? So we open the show with the escape from the bar of Madison and Strand. And you really need to question who is in control here because like it's it's ridiculous. It's so stupid. There is no there is no payoff and there is no tension and there is no drama because we know they've already survived and yep. they've, mm-hmm. they've met up with Alicia. That's the worst. It is the worst. And you know what? I actually missed how they got out. It was done so damn quickly. I put the show on, grabbed my phone, sat down. I missed it. It was done. Yeah. It, all within probably about five to ten seconds. Well, <laughs> it's like it did go a little bit longer than that. But I mean, like it's, you know, it's Q uh, magic back door out of the bar that just happened to be up against a wall that I didn't even notice last yeah. week. Mm. And there's this little half door that they can go through. And then it's kind of like, um, you know, it becomes a thing where you, you kind of go, okay, sure. And then you wait for some other drama or some other tension or something to build because you think, okay, fine, they're, they're gonna something else will happen. Oh, and, and it fucking doesn't. Mm. It doesn't. And let me just point this out. They were instantly sober. No. Oh yeah. Well, you okay. But <laughs> you know, in all fairness, if you went from like pretty drunk as shit to kind of like surrounded by 40 zombies, you might kind of get your wits. You're not still going to be singing on top of the bar. No, are you? I'm not saying that, but they were like very alert and everything was on point. Yeah. Well, they they're obviously survivors. Mate, if I had like <laughs> 10 beers <laughs> so I was like, run, I'll fucking take two steps and fall over. <laughs> also, when you're drunk, your head you probably think and... you're surrounded by zombies. You're like, ha Hey, you're mate. Hey. <laughs> oh, that's just Steve from down the yeah, road. I met him yeah, in the bathroom. It. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, well, maybe that's just bad writing. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> um, but one thing that I wanted to, to, to point out, and this is just because this is kind of how they get out. They managed to grab one of these um, zombies or walkers, whatever you want to call them. Um, and they do the old... Um, which is now the old go-to move. Yeah, let's cut one of them open and cover ourselves in you know their blood and shit. That's, I have a, it's lazy. It it is lazy <laughs> because now it's like it's very much a, like a go-to thing, and that's fine, right? But I guess I guess I have some sanitary questions. Yeah, because the go-to is always to smear it all over your face. Yes, right. So when you see a shot of Strand, like his face is is covered. In this gunk, yet his shirt is practically clean. <laughs> like, can you not just go shirt first shirt. and then, like, maybe not put it on your face at all? You would think so. Like, is it, and is it purely like, is it a scent thing? Like, is this has how, to be? Yeah. So it's a scent thing, right? So then you would assume then that zombies can smell clean humans. Yeah. Is that what we're trying to be led to believe? Well, I think, or it, is it, it a might, visual thing it might as well? Be a, might be like a, a mixture. But if it's a visual thing, then why don't they kind of like freak out when they're jumping over the bar like none of them can do, or when they're climbing up the edge mm. of some scaffolding or something well, like that? Well, I don't think they can actually register that. But what are they registering then? Nothing. So, but this is my question, and th- these are questions that I have that I demand answers for. Damn it! Also, someone if, let me know if they know. Yeah. Like there might actually be a theory out there. Yeah. If you're smearing it all over your face in your pores, you're going to get in your mouth and oh. in your eyes. And then you just, why aren't they zombies? I swear to God, at one point, I saw Strand lick his lips. Oh. <laughs> his, I swear. And his face was covered in this stuff. Mm. Um, but I don't know. But yeah, Maybe it doesn't affect you like that, though. Well, do you, do you okay. have to die first? Because I think the whole thing was everybody is infected. Yeah. And it's once you die, uh, you come back. Okay. So it's not necessarily so easily transmitted mm. as that, but the bite gives you infection, which incre- like uh, speeds up your death. Yeah. You die, you come back. Yeah. Right. Um, anyway, I just wanted to bring that up because I just don't know if that's, you know, like, is that going to be the thing now? Is this the go to for this? Is just everyone going to get out of every situation just by covering themselves in shit? Knowing these riders, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> There's a very good chance. They're just going to start wearing suits, zombie suits. Well, you know, in The <laughs> Walking Dead, they actually wear like full-on meat suits yeah, exactly. of these zombies to get past. They don't just simply smear a little bit of blood over them. Which is my point because when you look at like, um, you know, I think when they were leaving Alexandria in The Walking Dead, they had 
Like literally, yeah. there was chunks of meat hanging off them and stuff. <laughs> um, and this is merely a situation where they kind of, you know, get oh, their hands bit. dirty and they like pat their forehead. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you know, dabbing aftershave behind <laughs> yeah, the ears yeah, and all exactly that sort of like stuff. That. It's a new scent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Odor zombie. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know, man. Uh, like I, I don't know if it's lazy and they're just using this as a go-to all the time. We probably didn't even need to spend this much time on it. But like I, I think it's something that they're in danger of doing. Because they've already done that with Nick since almost day one. Yeah, day one, and it, everyone's doing it. It's just shit. I yeah. don't like it. Even the even the other survivors that Nick's met up with are doing it. Yeah, mm. exactly. So it's it's very it's it's a very easy response to okay. Well, this is why they're not being attacked by zombies right now. It might be a West Coast thing. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's a West Coast thing. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so anyway, let's get back to, let's kind of bring it back to, to the whole thing and, and what's happening. Um, I, I guess, so the whole point of this was, so Madison has effectively decided that Madison and Strand, once they've caught up with Helena and Alicia, they've all decided that it's time to work together, make a pact, um, get their shit together. And, you know, they could really dig this sort of hotel out and, you know, live. Yeah. And this could be their life. It's like a gated community and all that sort of stuff. Um, but then it's a very, very long process as to as to how they kind of do that. Um, and I guess this is where Alicia kind of becomes the most resourceful of them all. And before we go into that, I guess it's probably like when you think about this show, you've kind of got to point out that the kids seem to be developing a lot quicker to this society than the adults are. Yes, indeed. I don't know if that's like just a millennial thing. Yeah, maybe it's yeah, it's being naive. Maybe the 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 older people they they're not as trusting. Yeah, they're too, they're too jaded from yeah. you know their experience and all that sort of stuff. Yep. And you know these other kids are very like very willing to just you know let society fall to pieces <laughs> as it were um, because they weren't really I don't know heavily involved in it in the first place. I don't know. Um, but you when you look at characters like Alicia and Nick and even to a, to a lesser extent Chris. They are definitely coming along much better than, say, you know, the Madisons and and the Strands and um, the Travises and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. But you you'll probably also find that these characters will be the ones that cause the drama well, in the yeah. show. Yeah, you know, uh, through it, recklessness. Yeah, through recklessness. Yeah. So it's kind of needed just to push this story along. So yeah, keep it going. Yeah, I guess so. Well, this is this is kind of where Alicia has come up with this massive plan to to kind of drive the zombies off the pier and into the water rather than yes. like killing them room by room and, and dumping the bodies, like dragging the bodies out and building a pyre, uh, you know, of zombie bodies. Yeah. Just, <laughs> I'm sure that would just spread so much disease and nastiness. Well, I guess like, you know, it looked, it looked okay. But I think this is the problem like of this show. Like I think sometimes it, it kind of just relies on these big sort of like set pieces of action yeah. rather than the building of characters and story and things like that. So you get these mediocre little character interactions, but then you get this one big set like piece big, that they a do. A big spectacle yeah, that kind of makes you want to keep watching it. Yeah, because you're like, oh, like, you know, because initially when they were doing it, I'm like, well, what's the point? Like, it looks like they've only got 20 zombies yeah. or whatever. And then you see the aerial shot and you see exactly how many there are. There's like 100 or whatever. Yeah. And you kind of you kind of go, oh, okay, well, fair enough. Going room to room doing that, probably a bit of work. Um, so it was a good idea. It was a good idea. Uh, needs a lot of luck. Needs a lot of luck. Like you got to hope that Riptide comes in. Well, exactly. <laughs> and well, you, you actually got to hope that the zombies follow you off the edge of the bridge. Yeah, and you know you, we've seen them plenty of times before. Like they're not exactly afraid to just jump yeah if they think they're chasing food or whatever um but you know you're, you're banking on a lot of things you're banking on every single one of them yes. jumping like and just continuously like if you're dealing with 10 sure but if you're dealing with 100 at one point do they like stop at any point or do they just keep going because they're like oh yeah. look that other dude fell oh there must oh, be oh, something food down, down there. there yeah yeah and then you know let's not forget that zombies don't drown no, they just sink to the bottom and they keep walking. And they just walk. Yeah. They could walk to Australia if they wanted to. Oh, my God. Oh, Thank oh you my God. Ideas. They're on the way. Oh, shit. They're here. Don't go to the beach. Oh, my guys. God. We live in a coastal city oh as well. Oh, my God. The beach is already dangerous enough. It is. We've yeah. got like crocodiles and jellyfish and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. We don't need zombies. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> very, very lucky. Uh, it was it was kind of well done. I guess the way this sort of story arc ended was, for me, I think was probably the best um, a character piece they've done so far, which is where um, Strand is talking to Oscar, and this is where we find out 
the Jessica of the Pablo and Jessica. Yes. Which is Oscar's wife from the wedding, you know, two episodes ago or whatever. Um, but yeah, it was kind of like this is probably one of the best character interactions that they've done. Yeah. And I thought it was actually quite weird how like deep it got very quickly. Well, you, but you think like if you look at and this is why I think it works because it doesn't necessarily work because you're worrying about Oscar's tragedy with his wife. It works because you're worried about Strand and everything that he's been through. Yes. And like, you know, this is basically almost him kind of coming to the realization that he has to leave his home behind. Yes. And this is him, you know, kind of giving in. It's and, and his kind of, closure almost. Yeah. yeah. And that was, that whole scene was very, very well acted. Uh, and I will give, I will give them props for that for yes. sure. We do give the show a lot of shit. Uh, but that was done really well. That's a, that's a diamond in the rough this week. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And you can't find them every now and then with this show. Uh, the next storyline, Nick and Luci, Luci, Luciana? Luciana. Luci, Luciana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we got to work on our Spanish. <laughs> you do. I've, I've got it down pat. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, you're, yeah. you're good now. Um, but, yeah, this story. Yeah, a, bit of a, a little bit of a non-event. Really, realistically, like, probably could have taken up five minutes total screen time. Yeah, yeah. You, you could have pushed it to ten. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that was interesting was Nick using his junky skills to make fake pills yeah kind of being like the the west coast heisenberg but not yes. interesting yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much that's exactly <laughs> yeah it. um I, I don't know like i think you know when you think about and and we touched on it before in the sense of flipping back between you know constant storylines but that they did it so much that it felt like it was so much more story than it actually was yeah i think if you piece that together It'd be five minutes. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of what I mean. And and it can really just be broken down simply to to Nick developing relationships with two people. And that's kind of him, you know, developing, like furthering his relationship with Alejandro, who is like the leader of said area. Um, and you can see that he has kind of developed an affinity towards Nick because um, he kind of explained his shoulder bite story a bit more. Yeah, a little bit. And how it was about him sort of like helping a junkie and, you know, like... Um, that's kind of how he got bit in the first place was there was a junkie kid and, you know, he went in to save him and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, so you can tell that there's obviously that connection there and he feels strongly towards Nick. Um, how that develops, who knows? Um, and then it was it was basically Nick developing his relationship with um, Luciana. Which we all saw this coming from a mile oh, away. A mile away. Um, and this is where we learn about the Pablo of the Pablo and Jessica, which is um, uh, Luciana's... I think I'm saying that right, right? Hmm. Luciana? Luciana? It doesn't matter. So. Lucy. Uh, Lucy. Lucy's, yeah. Lucy's brother, Pablo. Gone. Gone. Dead. Catchalator.com. Um, yeah. Ripped, <laughs> to, ripped to pieces, Ugh. apparently. But you didn't see it. No. Like, no. Don't, you know, it's fine. No, I could watch it then. That's yeah. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, and that's really, that's really the side story of Nick for the week. So nothing really much out of that. No. And it almost looks like he's coming to terms with the life he's got now. Yeah. He's enjoying it. Yeah, he's um he's certainly learning um Spanish a lot quicker than we are. Yeah. Um, I learned so two much words. quicker. Well, because because like there's a, there is a scene where he's it's it's towards the end where he's in the room and he and was kind of like brushing up on his phrasing. Yeah. And she just she happens to wake up from sleeping on the bed and she's like, "I'm sorry, I was sleeping in Spanish." And he's like, oh, no, that's okay. Like he fully understa yeah. understood what that meant. Um, I got, I'm sorry, <laughs> but, you know, have no idea, like, you know, how quickly is this kid learning this language? Well, he was reading a Spanish dictionary. Have you actually like sat there and tried to learn learning anything? Learning it and then understanding it when it's Big said back difference. to you? T terrible. Es I can't do it. Especially when it's a native speaker like saying it because yeah. obviously the accent is quite like thick and strong and they say it very, you know, very quickly, quickly and, yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, but, you know, this kid, he's Nick, man. Like mm, this is awesome. this is Nick. Awesome Nick. He's awesome do Nick. Anything. Everyone says, everyone, everyone's like, oh, that Nick, he's an awesome kid. Yeah, he's, he's really <laughs> real quick good, learner. Yeah, he's a real quick learner. Uh, just just quietly, how can he read a Spanish dictionary? Because wouldn't all the definitions also be in Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> Kate, it's English, no. Spanish translation. Have no. you never seen one of these books? No, no, because he said it was a dictionary. Well, <laughs> you can get traveler's yeah, dictionary. But, but yeah, though. it's like a, it's you, in this in that day and age. <laughs> I'm not buying in it. that day and age. Like now, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> alternate universe. Now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> It's it's very. I'm calling it's, shenanigans. There are no <laughs> shenanigans. It's very simple. No, there is an English and a Spanish version of the same sentence. I don't even know why we're having this conversation. <laughs> Let's finish this one off. Um, one thing I did want to mention quickly is the fact that there seems to be 
they've conveniently brought in a lot of extra people all of a sudden. And you know these people are going to be the ones that cop the brunt of oh, the they're zombiness. Going to be the, they're going to be the red shirts. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Great way to put it. Mm. Um, they're going to be the red shirts because, you know, it doesn't seem like anytime soon any of these main people are really going to cop it. No. Um, and I don't really know what that does to build drama or tension because we don't really give a shit about anybody yet. No. Um, we barely give a shit about the main people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, and we're still, you know, nearly two full seasons seasons in trying to come to terms with that but yeah yeah what do you rate it uh this one for me it was better um it had its moments but it was you know it was enjoyable i did like the i did like the whole peer thing and all that like it you know it's it's never gonna get a four from me like this (laughs) show will have to do some major major work um to get a four from me unless i've given it a four before but my ratings mean nothing (laughs) (laughs) they mean nothing to anyone uh three and a half yeah, actually, I was going to give this three and a half. That's about right. The story is getting a little bit better. Yeah, that's about it. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, it does return next week with Pillar of Salt. Okay, so last week we received a tweet on Twitter, as you do. Mm-hmm. That's where you get your tweets. That's where I get mine. That's where all the magic happens. That's exactly right. Uh, so we received, we received a tweet um, uh, from a user named uh, Fiendish Keen, and he basically uh, tweeted us like our thoughts on a, on a fan theory. And what it did was it inspired us to actually do this show based around the craziest fan theories that we could find or come up with. Um, and so we're doing a top five. Woo! Top five. Top five, that dead or alive. Five. Crazy <laughs> fan theories. Comic book movie specifically. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, you know. Because otherwise you, you start branching out into too much shit. Well, yeah, exactly. If we you go, go comic go book, it's mental. Oh, it's huge. Comic book movie, we've only got a small sort of portion to, to really sort of dig it's a, from. Is it's a good a, niche. It is a good niche. Hmm. Um, so let's stop fucking around. And let's just get into it, shall we? Get into number five. So the number five top five crazy fan theories uh, is that Ant-Man is in every Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, not as Scott Lang so much as it is Hank Pym who was using the suit prior to giving it to Scott Lang. Mm. Uh, What do you think? I think this might have some value because he is from... Uh, you know, a previous generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he did... Well, it's it's inclined that the pin particles were making him go a little bit loopy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's obviously had a fair bit of experience using this. Exactly. That's true. Yeah. And then I think in even in Ant-Man, you see some footage of him, you know, doing some stuff and all that sort of thing. It's... I guess the biggest question is how would we ever know? You wouldn't. Right? Exactly. You'd never know. You'd never know. You'd never see him. Um, but, you know, it, it does pose the question, you know, I, I guess one thing that I thought of, Black Widow. Yeah. Could she really, by herself, in the Avengers, take on like seven Chitari by herself? Or did she have help? Yeah, she could have had help. Could have. She could have had a little bit of Ant-Man help. Mm, I was a bit sceptical about this one because I was like, oh, I just can't see it. But now that you've raised those things, I'm like, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Well, there is a reason they're called crazy fan <laughs> theories. <laughs> You're all crazy. Yeah, they're um, they're, and, and the fact you know. that it's the the Hank Pym. Yeah, yeah, Scott and not Lang. Scott Lang. Yeah, but now really? it is Scott Lang. Yes. Mm, so is it, he is now going to be in every around? movie? Yes. But oh. you see him. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just yeah. quietly, how cool would it have been to see Giant Man in New York City? Oh, that would have been cool, man. That's that a missed so opportunity. Cool. Well, mm. you know, they weren't even there at that point. Like within the Ant-Man character, yeah. Ant-Man hadn't even come out as a movie, I don't think. No, no. definitely not. Um, so Ant-Man hadn't have come out as a movie, but that would have been cool. Um, I think even cooler would have been the fact if they had have got their shit together and we could have seen Spider-Man yes. oh, in yeah. that. That would have been know, yes. first. That would have been fun, man. Actually, why? Like, is there no reference to him? Uh, is there a reference to him like taking down some Chitauri? No. I, no, I, think, that, I think by the way... How I think how they've gotten around it is they've made him so young. So if you go back to the events of the Avengers, he would have been too young and probably not even Spider Man. Yeah, at so that he point. probably didn't have his powers. Back yeah, exactly. Then. Yeah. So so that's how they've kind of gotten around that one. 
um, by making him a kid, yeah, uh, which is great, like fantastic, yeah. because that was one of the biggest things. It's like that was even a fan theory itself. Like that Spider Man was there somewhere, yeah, you know, doing his thing, but you just never saw him. Mm. Uh, well, you're wrong because yeah. he wasn't because he That's was a crazy. kid. That's crazy. Yeah, that was, is crazy. He was probably ten. Yeah. yeah. Ten-year-olds yeah. can't do that stuff. They can't. Not until they've been bitten by a radioactive spider exactly. at least. Exactly, and had a little bit, bit of exposure to the world. <laughs> yeah, so what are we thinking? Yes or no? I'm going to run with it. I'm going to say yes, but only as Hank Pym. Mm. Okay. I think it's plausible now that you... <laughs> We're doing a Mythbusters thing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> We've talked about it. You've convinced me, but I agree. Not Scott Lang. Yeah, It'd have to Hank, be Hank Pym. Pym. Um, uh, I'm just going to say yes for the coolness factor of like <laughs> yeah. how cool it would have been that he was there the whole time. Mm. I don't know why then if that is the case that no one has ever made reference to him. Yeah. Maybe he wasn't even part of the Avengers and he's no. just kind of like, I'm going to help. I'm going to help yeah. you And out. I'm not even going to tell anybody because that's the type of guy I am. Okay. Mm. Can I just like throw this in? Yeah. What about Doctor Strange? What about him? Why wasn't he? Yes. Yes. Oh. Mm. Because they hadn't thought of that yet. <laughs> <laughs> we could do this all day. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's a very good point what? because he is New York based. Yes. Uh, but then, you know, how far do you want to break it down? Do you want to break it down to Luke Cage, Daredevil? Like, yeah, exactly. you know, there are all these New York based heroes because there are a lot of them. Mm. Well, actually, we and get a little bit of a backstory with that in regards to Jessica Jones saying, like, we weren't even involved in that shit. Yeah, but, but why? Because they're pricks. <laughs> well, yeah. Is it they because? Hate well, is it because they weren't like they didn't actually know who they were, like as in you know they weren't really around at the time because we've been through their origin stories almost. Could be. Mm. Is, you know what I mean? Like, Maybe because New York's such a big city, we don't know how long that battle actually went on for in real time. Yeah, true. But if you look at it, um, Hell's Kitchen was affected. And Hell's Kitchen, you know, like they make mention of the yeah. fact, like the incident mm-hmm. or whatever that was affected, uh, whether it's a case of, um, you know, Daredevil hadn't decided to be Daredevil yet. Mm-hmm. Um, Jessica Jones, I don't know, Luke Cage, busy. All on holidays. Yeah, maybe, maybe they were overseas. <laughs> Who knows? They have Living lives it up. too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Heroes have lives. Um, yeah, but they did. But uh, in Jessica Jones, she made reference to the fact she knew, she, I think it was 99. She knew of 99 other superheroes essentially right. other than herself because she was asked how many of you are there and she, like the the episode is titled 99 friends mm. and yeah she's like 99 this yeah. last time i checked there's 99 plus me that's a lot of fucking people man that is that's a lot of people and then they leave it to seven fucking, yeah is it even seven <laughs> yeah i think it's however many it is half of them don't even have fucking any abilities yeah well you got hawkeye <laughs> and black widow who are effectively just humans yeah at top top level humans. humans badass humans but you know just humans mm. the guy um, had seven arrows <laughs> <laughs> and he killed or, so many people or did he oh because he maybe actually Ant-Man had seven took out all of the people that hawkeye was meant to hit because he was like i'm gonna help you out brother you've missed oh no <laughs> i've got it i've got it this this is what happened okay Hawkeye had seven arrows. Ant Man picked them all up and brought, <gasps> them, back. And brought them back. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. So he was like his little arrow delivery boy. Yeah, yeah. nice. And that's, that's how he continued to have yeah. so many fucking arrows, you yeah. guys. That makes sense. All right. It does. Uh, all right. Confirmed. <laughs> confirmed. <laughs> Stamp it. Let's go. All right. Number four. The number four crazy fan theory is that Phil Coulson, uh, one time director of S.H.I.E.L.D., no, he wasn't, was he? Uh, yes. Yeah, no, he's so. current director. No, he's not. Well, mm. no, he was last season. Anyway, <laughs> Phil Coulson of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, is actually a super soldier. Mm. So there are a few reasons as to why people think this is. So we'll go into this first and then okay. you know, we'll break it down. Convince me. Mm-hmm. So so the the evidence, I guess, as you would say, would be pointing towards that in um, a Captain America, the first Avenger, there's a little kid holding a, a shield, obviously a little bit of a fan of a shields mm-hmm. oh my god oh reference my god. uh but also it's a captain america shield so he's and his name's phil they actually make reference to the kid being named phil, inside, phil um secondly what did they say <laughs> that's the line anyway keep going okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's right yeah i yeah. get it um so secondly um the fact that colson is a super super like captain america fan yep. has been for the longest time has those vintage vintage, cards, vintage yeah. cards that he may have gotten back in the day who knows um, you know, I guess the other thing would be that once Cap was frozen, would it not be likely then that he would be the one that would, you know, throw himself forward to, to you know, to, to take on the same testing that he did Yeah. Um, in order to, you know, as an homage to his hero, as it were. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's a high level government agent that's thrown into some crazy, crazy, crazy situations when you think about it. And would they really be willing to do that to a man who is essentially just you? 
I'm looking at you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Man, come on, I can totally <laughs> hold I can. myself up in a gunfight. <laughs> you can barely hold aliens. yourself up. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but you know, but would they really throw like a, a human in? Because um, he doesn't just sit behind a desk. Let's face it, he gets out there and he has no powers whatsoever. But so, that's or the same he. thing for Black Widow and yeah. Hawkeye. Yeah, he is a trained agent. Hmm. Yeah, but don't you think there's like there's some credence to it in the sense that you know when you think about everything that he's been through, you know this is a guy that you know got stabbed with Loki's spear. Yeah, um, still survived. You know they well, kind actually, of made he, they well, brought him back to life. Well, still for good reason. Still, you know that's well, that's <laughs> like, not everyone can just do that. <laughs> well, I think anyone could. <laughs> you know, he lost an arm. Yeah, now has a bionic one. That never happens. No. <laughs> right, Bucky? <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, but do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I think it's like, I think it's one of the more sort of far out there ones. Yeah. People might be reaching. I yeah. But there's some evidence that points towards it, man. Like this, this guy seems like he has been around since like the early, early days of Captain America, which would make him very fucking old. Yeah. I guess the vintage cards are a big thing because like, you're not just going to buy them on eBay. Well, I think. Well, yeah, well, how did he? How did he reference that he got those? Well, I you, don't remember. You have to remember this guy is like working quite high up in Shield. He's got a pretty decent oh, paycheck. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's yeah. just like playing money on, for him. The guy's on eBay every other <laughs> yeah. day getting trading <laughs> this, cards. My spirit animal. <laughs> this guy is makes on my six... X Men set look you know pale in comparison yeah. compared to what this guy's got. <laughs> just shit house. Yeah, but Thanks, yeah, man. this guy's on a six six figure wage. Easy, easy, mm-hmm. easy, easy. He got a bionic uh, gets, arm. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. He got a bionic arm. Uh, he has that freaking. He has a shield now. Yeah. We didn't even oh, talk yeah. about that. He actually has a shield. Yep. Uh, I don't mm. know, man. It's there. I don't. I, I don't think so. No. I think you're, you're reaching at. You're, you're clutching at straws. Well, it's for not this. me. No, it's you. <laughs> you're trying you're crazy, personally. mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're bloody off the hook. Um. All right. But you know, and and what we want everyone to do as well is to each and every one of these as we go through. Let us know what you think uh, on Twitter or Facebook or wherever you want. Um, or write us a letter hmm. do whatever you want but let us know what you think of each individual theory and if there's anything we missed that might be pertinent to said theory being deemed plausible hmm. yes yeah so what is that one no 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 nah. uh, busted busted yep <laughs> oh. busted or confirmed. is that a copyright thing can we like oh. can we get away with that I don't think you can copyright words <laughs> yes you can <laughs> nah it's called a trademark that's a brand. But they don't put the <laughs> trademark on it. Anyway, myth busted. Sue me, motherfucker. <laughs> just, just, just Troy, not me. <laughs> All right, that's going to take us to number three. All right, so the number three crazy fan theory uh, is for The Dark Knight Rises. And this is the one, uh, this is basically saying that Batman actually sacrifices himself at the end while, uh, while disposing of Bane's bomb. If you remember the scene, mm-hmm. um, and this it's it's basically a sad old and alone Alfred is um, merely imagining him in the cafe scene, um, basically as a as a projection of his own hopes and dreams of what he hoped for Bruce, um, but in actual fact he's just seeing things because he's crazy. If we confirm yeah. this, it's going to break my heart. Well, I mean, it, like when you think about it, do you, do you think there is any way that you? <sighs> Think about it like this. If you think about the events in um, The Dark Knight. Mm. So this is a situation where the love of his life, right? So somebody that he was, you know, had met, you know, as a child and they grew up together. The love of his life, he was considering leaving the mantle behind if he could find a suitable replacement. Yeah. Mm. Right? So he was essentially saying that, you know, I will step aside if Harvey Dent basically, you know, cleans up the city sort of thing. Uh, he was willing to do that for her and you would assume her alone because for, for Batman or for Bruce Wayne to, to, to step aside from that, that would be a massive, massive thing. So then when you look at The Dark Knight Rises, he's kind of doing the same thing then for Anne Hathaway, yes, yeah. for Catwoman. And I know in the comics they have a massive history together, but that history hasn't been built in, in the this, movies. In this no, movie. not at all. So it's kind of like, would he really then just go, well, I got a new chick now, so fuck it, I'll go back to my old thing and you know, I'll leave it to... To old Nightwing here or Robin or whatever. Yeah. You know? What do you think? Because, like, would he, I guess my point is then, would he really step away just for a chick? Yeah. It, uh, just because he has, like, a, a, a possible suitable replacement, who, by the way, has had no fucking training whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. He's just, He's a, just a cop. cop. He's a cop wolves. with some good instincts. Yeah. Uh, and that's about it. 
Uh, I think this one actually holds some value, this theory. Yeah. Because, I mean, the plane's autopilot was all fucked up. Yep. Mm. Uh, I, I think it didn't even have enough fuel to get back. Well, yeah. I, I, like, I guess the, the, the biggest thing for me is how does he get back? Yeah. Mm. Like, you know, like, where does he eject? Like, how far away do you have to be? Like, he obviously just ejected once he hit the ocean enough for him to, like, shoot into down. the water. Maybe. And is that far enough away? Who knows? Yeah, how does he know what the radius of this bomb blast is? How did he even know going that far out was safe? Yeah, yeah. true. The only thing that leads credence to it not being true is the fact that they made mention of the autopilot multiple times. Yeah. And there's even this, like, the subtle reference of, um, I think it's um, Morgan Freeman kind of goes, oh, oh, someone says like it was working the whole time or something like that. I don't know. Mm. But they make reference to the fact that the autopilot was actually working. Really? Yeah. I can't uh. remember that. Yeah. Now, I, I, I think this, this theory is good. I enjoy it. And I think it's a good way to actually wrap up that trilogy. Mm. Yeah. You yeah, know, it was, it's the ultimate sacrifice. Exactly. And, that's, and he does actually say, he says earlier in the thing when he's talking to Catwoman, he, he says, I've, she's, she's like, you've given the city everything. And he's like, no, I haven't. Not yet. Mm. And the last thing that he has to give the city is his life. Yeah. I like it. Me I, too. I think, yeah, it's a good end. Yeah. I'm going to go plausible because yep. I don't want it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the fact of, like, I don't like the thought of Batman dying at any point. Mm. Um, but that's not to say it would never happen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I like that. That's good. Yeah. Whoever, whoever said that one is really good. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to take us to number two. All right. The number two theory... Uh, crazy fan theory is that, and this is an older one. Mm-hmm. I mean, a couple of these are old, but you know, this is this is an older one that you know. We'll we'll see what you guys think. Uh, Jared Leto's Joker is actually his most famous victim, Jason Todd, and there are a couple of reasons why this apparently works. When this was brought to the forefront, you know, when I think it was even when we first saw the Robin suit, like in some stills from before Batman vs Superman even yeah. came out. Uh, but some like some eagle-eyed internet users have caught a couple of different things. So one of the things they've caught, uh, there are clues such as matching bullet wounds on Jared Leto's Joker that match the same positioning of the Robin costume wow. um, that we see in the movie. That's ridiculous mm-hmm. that someone has found that. I don't even know, like, you know, have they? I haven't researched it. <laughs> but, you know, that's apparently, it's apparently there. Um, there's also the J that um, is inked on the Joker's face is essentially the same branding as Jason Todd um, in Batman Arkham Knight. Mm-hmm. And when you think about it, would this particular Joker really just brand himself with like his initial J, like as in J for Joker? Like, do you think that's kind of, or do you think every tattoo has a deeper meaning? And this is actually, you know, it's, it's a subtle reference to, to his previous life as Jason Todd. Um, well, you also miss that he has a, another tattoo of a dead Robin on him. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Oh. Now, did but did he get that because we all know that the Joker actually killed, killed Robin? Yeah. That particular like character. A homage to his. Well, yeah, to his victim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and something to kind of taunt Batman, like whenever well, they're sort of face to face. And I guess like, in the taunting, dead Robin. taunting Batman, we've got the stills of the suit with the um, oh, the jokes on you, yeah, Batman yeah. sort of yeah. thing. So I don't know. This is kind of, it's interesting. The, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I, I, I've seen this theory around mm. for a long time and I've never gotten on board with it. Yeah. Why is that? It... It does. I don't think it works. I I don't want it to work, mm. and and I don't think it's going to to go that way. Like I don't hold much um, credence to it. Really, yeah. I think like it, it would be pretty silly if they did do it. Yeah, that's it. It almost doesn't make sense for it to work. Yeah, and it's kind of um, you know like why has it now never been referenced? Because these guys have obviously come face to yeah. face. This isn't a guy that's hiding under a red hood. Mm. This is or like a you know red helmet or yeah. whatever. This is a guy whose face is yeah. out there. And yeah, there's some tattoos and there's you know the skin is white and he's mm. been in some acid or whatever it is and his hair's green. But man, like if you put on some makeup and like did your hair green, I'm still <laughs> going to know it's you. Yeah, as uh, an no, example, that's not me, man. No, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, you'd quite easily recognize oh, yeah, these guys easy. have been face-to-face before. Well, especially um, if he's a protege of him. He's taught him for years and years and years. Yeah. But is that, are they just not referencing it though because they're going to reveal that later? Nah, mm. I don't think that's that's a strong story. 
let me tell you, that would be a waste of a fucking great character in the Red Hood. Yes. If yeah. they if they do do it that way. Yes. <laughs> do do. <laughs> but you know, if they go that way, there would be it would be pretty stupid because the Red Hood is is awesome, mm. uh, and I really would hope that at some point he comes into this um, DC extended universe. He's perfect for this universe. Yeah, for he sure. Will fit in just bloody perfectly. Yeah. So I say no. Mm. Yeah, I say no. Me too. Um, and I don't want it to be. And that's my main driver. I think I don't want to believe any of this. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm, I'm just, I'm just like, going to nah. shut my eyes, yeah. put and my hands over my ears, yeah. and say la 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 <laughs> till it goes exactly away. Right. If I can't hear or see it, see it, it's not happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, but that's that is one of the stronger fan theories that have been it out is. there. I've heard yeah. about this one multiple times. Yeah. I think there's about twenty YouTube videos just yeah. dedicated. To yeah, this. exactly. And this is how deep people have gone. I don't know why they want it so bad to, mm. to happen. Yeah, I think it's a terrible storyline. Yeah. So mm. anyway, that's for people to judge. Exactly. Not me. And that's going to take us to number one. All right, the number one theory, and this is this is a good one, obviously, because it's number one. <laughs> but um, th- this is basically around Stan Lee and his cameos in the movies. And you know how I've yeah, I've. You fucking hate Stanley cameos, <laughs> man. I don't hate Stanley cameos. You do. I have copped some heat because of one comment I made one time about. They need to stop. <laughs> but anyway, in regards to um, Stanley's cameos, he's actually the same character in every single one, and that is you are to the Watcher, mm-hmm. um, basically keeping an eye on the goings on in his Marvel universe. And there are a couple of reasons why this works. And um, I guess you know, for those of you very quickly who don't know who you are to the Watcher is, um, the Watchers are essentially just an immortal sort of extraterrestrial race, um, and they send Watchers out yeah. <laughs> to to basically to to oversee um, different universes. And Uatu's is Earth. Uh, and effectively, they're not supposed to get involved or be seen. They're supposed to like silently just observe. Yes. Uh, obviously, you are too does, um, and that could, and that's kind of where people are coming from. It's like Stan Lee is sort of popping up in every single sort of movie as the same type of character. You know, he's very just a generic kind of everyman, yes. but he's always there. And he's always watching the goings on of these characters. And he's not bound by, you know, studio rules, as it were. <laughs> so he can he can jump between, you know, Marvel Studios and Fox and Sony yeah, yeah. and all yeah. that sort of stuff and pop up in any single movie, effectively keeping an eye on the entire going on, goings on uh, in his Marvel universe. Uh, and I think that works really well. And I think it's really cool. Um, I would love for this to be real, man. I don't Me think too. we'll ever get a payoff. <laughs> um, but, you know, what do you think? I think it's great. I think it's a really, really clever and fun theory. Mm. Yeah. I think one, because like one thing, if if you know, like with Uatu, like a, as I sort of mentioned before, he's not supposed to get involved, mm. but he does get involved. Yes. Um, and, you know, he does have like interactions with people and stuff like that. And there's, this is one of the things like, Stanley pops up everywhere, but he does actually interact with, you know, the the people sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, he'll talk to Tony Stark or he'll talk to Captain America and, you know, th- this, that and the other. So um, it just, I think the only movie he didn't pop up in was, was he in Fantastic Four? Yes. What was he in Fantastic Four? Uh, he tried to get into the wedding and they wouldn't let him in. Oh, uh. I don't, oh, no, which Fantastic Four? The new one I'm talking about. Sorry. Oh, the new one. Yeah. Oh. Let us know. I just blanked that out of my memory. Yeah, well. I can't remember. But anyway, like point is, he's been in absolutely everything just about. So Yeah. Hey, I, I, I reckon this is cool. Yeah. I, it will never happen, but... You'll never know. We'll never get Yeah, you'll never get the payoff of it. But I really like the idea. Yeah. So. And I think it works. It does work. It works really, really well. Well, I'll tell you what. So as the guy who has had some... Um, some problems with these cameos. <laughs> this is how I'm going to look at this from now on. So every cameo that Stan Lee does, I'm going to look at him as you are to the Watcher to rather it. than Stan Lee, the old dude that is still popping up in fucking movies <laughs> uh, as the same dude almost every time. But I think it's cool if, if you, know, you look at it from that point of view and he's just there keeping an eye on what's happening. Yeah. I yeah. like it. Me too. All right. I'm going to put that as not like confirmed or anything. That's just a, I really like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the next sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. The, it's in the, I really like this category and I hope it's true. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's it. That's, that's the number one. Yeah. That's good. That's, that's a good five. number one. That is a good is. number one. Uh, there were some honorary mentions, 
that I'll quickly run through. Uh, that's the fact one of them is the Red Skull is actually still alive. He has to be. That mm. is too good of a fucking character to get rid of. Yeah, whether they use Hugo Weaving or, or somebody else. Doesn't matter. They could use anyone. Yeah, and... but they're basically saying he has access or had access to the Tesseract, which could effectively help him, you know, tra- like teleport or yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's there somewhere waiting in the wings, waiting for his, um, his Moment time. Moment to shine. Yeah, to pop back in with he's his... He's coming back with Thanos. Fiery Red Skull. <laughs> he might do that. Probably. Uh, Nick Fury. This is, this is interesting. Uh, Nick Fury and Jules from Pulp Fiction are actually the same person. I saw this just <laughs> recently, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, because of the, the surname on a grave or something? No, it's actually... It's, it's, it's Nick Fury is the name on his headstone. I think his fake headstone at the end of um, Civil War, uh, when they play off that yeah. he has oh, died yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yep. But it's um it's underneath. It's like Ezekiel three sixteen or whatever it is, and it's mm-hmm. like the path of the righteous man. And you know, obviously, that's the very famous quote from Jules yeah. from Pulp Fiction when he goes through. You know, the path of the righteous man yeah. is beset. You know, blah blah blah, all that sort of stuff. Um, but that is actually not that verse from the Bible, that's a verse that was made up specifically by Quentin Tarantino for that movie. Uh, so they're kind of like trying to like throw in the fact that this is like, you know, Jules is kind of Nick Fury before he became Nick Fury. And that's yeah. who he actually was like prior hmm. to becoming director of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> um, you know, and they're saying like, because, you know, there's a there's another theory for Pulp Fiction that the suitcase that they have, I don't know how well you guys know the movie, mm. but the suitcase that they have actually contains the soul of someone. But, it, you know, I don't yeah. know. You never actually find out what's in it, if I remember. Um, but what they're saying is what if it was something, you know, bigger than that? What if it was like a Tesseract or what yeah. if it was like, you know, oh. something like that? So, you know. <laughs> that's a tricky one. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And, you know, all of Quentin Tarantino's movies are all in the same universe as yeah. well. Yeah, exactly. So, oh, damn. Mm. That's a good Give one. that man a mark. Marvel movie. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, so another one that popped up is that Crisis on Infinite Earths. So the Crisis on Infinite Earths storyline will actually bring together DC's movie and TV universes uh, and have them all. So you could have effectively because of the events that take place, you could have multiple flashes and you could have, you know, like all this sort of stuff. Like, And that's how you can have the Ezra Miller flash and how you can have the Grant Gustin. And, and that sort of thing. So whether that happens, that's a little bit older as well. That was kind of, that came around when um, Supergirl and Flash did their crossover. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So that's a little bit older, but that is one of the bigger ones that are out there. And the last one that I've got is um, the fact that Loki wanted to lose to the Avengers. So from the Avengers. Hmm. Yeah, I've heard that one. Yeah. So his plan the entire time, because think about how it ended for him. Yes. He effectively ended up on the throne of Asgard. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, you know, was it was it basically just his way of getting a ticket back home to, uh, you know, to effectively take the throne? I'd believe that. Yeah. Yeah. That's and a good one. I, and he's smart enough for it too. Yeah. I love Loki. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, they're some of the biggest ones we've got. They mm. are, there's some good ones in there. Uh, let us know what you think of them. Yeah. Mm. And let us know if you've got any others that we missed uh, that are just as crazy or just as cool. And that means it's time for Comic of the Week, an all-new segment where we review, recommend, and rate a brand new comic release from the previous couple of weeks. Our Comic of the Week is brought to you by Kasplat Comics and Collectibles. For all your comic and pop culture needs, visit kasplatcomics.com.au or you can check them out on Facebook and Twitter. We'll leave you a link in the show notes. Comic of the Week. Intense. (laughs) Uh, Okay, the comic of the week for this week is Clean Room number 11, written by Gail Simone with art by John Davis Hunt and published through Vertigo. Um, And okay, for those of you uh, who haven't read Gail Simone's first work with Vertigo yet, I'll give you a brief rundown. So Clean Room is essentially a psychological horror story revolving around Astrid Mueller, leader of the Honest World Foundation, and a world-famous self-help guru whose Clean Room acts as a top-secret treatment facility to both the rich and the dangerous. Chloe Pierce is a reporter bouncing back from attempted suicide after her partner blew out his brains while holding a copy of Astrid's book. Now, she's desperate to learn the truth she believes Honest World and its enigmatic leader is hiding. 
So issue number 11 continues to give uh, this series a lot of justice. And if you've made it this far, you know that there are forces at play beyond anything Chloe Pierce could have ever imagined. Entities do battle for control of Earth, while other forces attempt to take control of Honest World. Meanwhile, Chloe's newfound friend Spark unleashes hell on the occupants of the clean room. So fans of horror comics, I say this with great intensity look no further simone's strength has always been her ability to create well-developed underdog characters that you can't help but root for and while clean room definitely has that she has also created some truly mad horrific characters vividly brought to life by the art of john davis hunt whose sole purpose seems to be scaring some brown into your pants <laughs> for fans of this particular genre or fans of gail simone alike clean room is definitely a certified winner uh, i'll give it four tubs of purell out of five if you don't know what purell is it's hand sanitizer. <laughs> All about that germ-free. All about that germ-free clean room activity. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, though, uh, it's a great series. Mm-hmm. Uh, up to issue 11. So it's been going for a little while. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, but you can jump in pretty easily on that. Yeah, I think so. Good. 11 issue or 10 previous issues is not a lot to catch no, up on. Really what's that, about think. 40 pages in comic book world? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no. Easy done. Uh, that, yeah. Oh, actually, that's not it. That's not My it. God, I almost transitioned out of the show <laughs> before we <laughs> You're did jump this in the thing. gun. Uh, we actually got a, um, uh, not long before we, we went to uh, air. I guess. Is to that the, a thing? To record. To record. Live, <laughs> live to record. Yeah. <laughs> Once we went live to record, we actually received a tweet uh, from Young Legend 1234 and he has asked a question, should or will Marvel retcon the TV universe from the movies? Uh, he thinks they should. And I, like, I just thought this was an interesting question uh, that we should probably take a little bit of time to discuss. Um, so what do you think? Do you think that the movies should effectively remove themselves from the continuity of the TV shows. Yeah, I think so. I mean, they they don't interact enough to warrant keeping them con- connected. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the sense that uh, we, we said earlier that Jessica Jones is like, oh, the reference the Avengers. Yeah. That yeah. was about it. But people probably didn't pick up on that. No, to no. Be well, and because they never, like she never actually, or any of them, ever, they call the, the thing the incident. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, the green guy or yeah. the God dude or like whatever. <laughs> like they don't actually ever reference the names. Yeah. yeah. And if, if they're actually connected, why can't they say Hulk? Yeah. Or why can't they say Thor or whatever? Because surely people by now know the names of these people. Exactly. Yeah. It was all over the news at the end of the Avengers. That's right. And the fact that even Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., is very loosely based to the movies. Mm. You maybe get one or two mentions from them a season mm. about what happens in the greater MCU. Well, yeah, like I guess when you look at the events of um, Civil War, or like the end of the events of Captain America, the Winter Soldier yeah. and all that sort of stuff, they do get a reference. So obviously, you know, Hydra taking over S.H.I.E.L.D. and yeah, all that yeah. sort of stuff plays heavily uh, into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But beyond that... That's it. There's nothing. There's there's nothing. And there, there's no reason why they can't just kind of go, okay, you know what? Even though we've said it, let's forget that we said it. Yeah. And let's move on and pretend and have these two as two separate you know entities. Yeah. Um, because then, like, you're left with a situation where if you're not going to bring the two together, then you're giving yourself characters that you will never actually be able to bring to the big screen unless you bring the actors that are currently playing them on the Netflix series yeah, or something right. like that. So if you wanted, if you want a Daredevil, you can only use Charlie Cox mm-hmm. as Daredevil yep. um, and that might not work on the big screen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if, if you're going to have it, you're probably better off doing what DC have done and keeping them completely separate. separate. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Mm. Myth busted. Dang. It's not even a thing. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think for sure. Uh, but that's a great question. Mm-hmm. That is. That's yeah. really good. Excellent. Now that is it. Yay. Oh my God. That is we it. We got That there. is it. We, we, we certainly got there in the end. Um, hey, let's thank some people and whatnot. Let's do that. Yeah. Uh, we want to thank everyone who listens to the show. Subscribes. Yeah. Reviews. Even. All of that. Well, actually, we're getting a couple more reviews lately. Thank you, yeah, yeah. guys. <laughs> like we it's appreciate a it. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, it is good. It's um, we really do appreciate it. If you do leave us a review, though, regardless of whether it's uh, from one to five, please leave us some words to read, even hmm. if you want to call us dickheads. You can do that. I call hate Amy it. a dickhead, yeah, for sure. I love when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite thing. That's my favorite thing ever. <laughs> um, yes, we are on various social media things, yes, such as such as Facebook. That's uh, Comic Confidential. Uh, we're also on Instagram and Twitter. That's at Comic Con Pod. And uh, someone said we're on YouTube. So Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> yeah, go check that out. Yeah. If yep. you can. Figure yeah. it out. Search it. 
Uh, we also have a Snapchat. Uh, Snapchat yeah, we I do. Say? Dog pictures galore, like fairy crowns, all of that. Fairy crowns. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Get amongst it. I'm all about that. Uh, yeah. I want the hoe filters on me though. Yeah. Okay, I'll keep in mind of that. Yeah. We're all about hoe filters. And uh, confidential. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have a website. That's comicconpod.com. You can jump on there. You can listen to all our previous episodes. Uh, you can also listen to the other show on our network, The Advisory. Yes. Which Listen to those guys. We are part of a network. Yes. Mm. Yeah, the Comic Confidential Network. Uh, the Advisory is on there. They had a great show this week talking about dick tailoring. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> if, do not get fooled. Yeah, do not be fooled. Uh, don't, be, don't be a fool. Wrap your tool. But get it wrapped by a professional <laughs> yeah. uh, who can, you know, measure you out <laughs> and have it fit. Yeah, perfectly. very, very weird um, episode. For condoms, by the way. Yes. <laughs> That's what they're talking about. In uh, case you missed it. Yeah. So anyway, great episode from the guys, as always. Mm-hmm. Um, don't forget, we've also got a Patreon. And we've got a new perk on there, guys. Oh, we're gonna yeah. start be doing we're gonna start doing uh movie Commentary. commentaries and I think we can you wanna announce who it is that the movie that we're doing? Oh my god, you put me on the spot. But yes, yes, I think we should. Okay. So coming soon, <laughs> we'll have an exact date for you. Obviously, I am stepping aside for four weeks, um, but we'll probably get it done not long after that. Yeah. Or oh, actually, you reckon we could sneak it in before you go? Oh, don't put that pressure on me. Chad. No. <laughs> don't throw it out there like we're actually recording. This is yeah. going to go to people. That's fine. Don't put me on the spot. You're on the spot. You'll either have it within the next two weeks or, or the next sometime six. within the next two months. Yes. Uh, you announce someone. Okay, yeah, we're going to do our first commentary on Deadpool. Deadpool. Nice. And I think that's pertinent because it was our very first Becoming episode of circle. the show. Uh, the Circle of Life is complete. Oh, Lion um, King reference. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've got them all. Uh, <laughs> Pokemon yeah. reference. Hey, I didn't even think of that one. Um, Deadpool, man. I think that's going to be cool. Yeah. That, that's a funny movie, man. That's going to be fun to just sit back and, and just kind of, you know, Talk, talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, talk shit over. Yeah. But um, all it's only a dollar. It is. So you're going to get that. And you also get access to the show early if we ever get it done early. <laughs> Sometimes we do. Sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's super rare. We're consummate professionals, as I'm pretty sure I make reference to every week. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, that's going to be fun. It's that's going to be, gonna be really so good. fun. Um, yeah. Coming next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, it may come next week. We also have another show coming next week. That's going to contain some things. Um, we are still working on said thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, but rest assured, we will most definitely be covering Gotham, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Fear the Walking Dead, and insert thing here. Yeah. 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 Uh, thanks for listening, you guys. As always, I'm Troy. I'm Cade. And I'm Amy. And this has been Comic Confidential. Cheers. Bye. Peace. Hashtag spicy tuna rice burger. <laughs> I'm making that when I get home. <laughs> I'm coming to your place for dinner. <laughs>